Hello everyone and welcome back to more Knowing Wheel. Yes, we return today, episode 202, to preview the Brazilian Grand Prix. Just four rounds to go of the 2024 campaign. Anything can happen between now and the end of the year. That's right, I'm back believing that maybe <laughs> Max Verstappen isn't going to wrap it up with a couple of races to go. One man that is hoping Max Verstappen can wrap it up pretty soon is Jamie183. How, how are we doing, sir? I'm good. Uh, I'm... I'm back on the worry train after uh, after getting off it after Cota. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not ultimately confident. I do think Max will win it, but that could be some uh, some hopium creep creeping in. But four races, two sprints, and forty seven points. For is it? For it is forty seven points. Correct. Yes. So that's more than ten points per race weekend. Which is going to be quite with, a with two sprints in that time. Yeah, but Max has won every it, sprint this year so far. So you know, he has still, hasn't he? That's quite. That's that is fairly mad. Isn't in he? the four the fastest car. He, okay. <laughs> um, to be fair, every sprint weekend they have had the fastest car, haven't they? Mm. Apart from Cota. Not Cota, and I would say yeah. not Austria. But, hey, yeah. he took pole by half a second on the shortest track on the calendar. Yeah, but that's because Max is good. Yeah, but so's Lando in Austria. Yeah, that's why Lando should have won the race if he didn't drive into Max. Um, oh, right, okay, we're going, we're going back there, aren't yeah. we? Let's let's move on from that as quickly as we you, can. You'd, you'd never guess it's been a fairly slow news week <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, would you? With the fact Jamie and I are rambling less than two minutes in. Yes. Um, but I mean, we we have got a few things to talk about. Obviously, it is yet another sprint weekend. Uh, late on in the campaign, Jamie. Luckily, this one, all the timings are fairly sensible uh, for us Europeans. And, you know, a Brazilian sprint is always quite a special one, isn't it? It is. It was the, f the sprint that made everyone think sprints were all right back in 2021, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Because... It's, been, it's the only track that's been a sprint every year. It is. What was the third sprint that year? Because it was Silverstone, Brazil. Monza. It's, it's, sprint, it shows you how good Monza was that nobody remembers it ever had a sprint race. Yeah, true. Because Bottas um, won that one as well, I think. Bottas did win that with Max second and Lewis had a terrible start. And Ricardo came third, didn't he? And then won the GP. Um, yes. Brazil 2021, Hamilton just cheated with a broken engine. Uh, but it was a good race, to be fair. And yeah, I'm kind of hoping we get some of those kind of title fight shenanigans going on again where where Max goes and plays with Lando's rear wing and shows that it's flexible or something like that. So, yeah, the sprint race is always fun. And uh, it might be made more interesting. And maybe I'm wrong here, but can Max not take his grid pen in a he sprint? He cannot. You have to take it into the Grand Prix. So why did Liam Lawson have a grid pen for the sprint? Two races He didn't. Ago. He didn't. Okay. Maybe, well, I'm wrong. Uh, <laughs> he started yes. last in the race. <laughs> yes, he did, didn't he? You cannot serve uh, grid penalties in sprints. You, you obviously you could you could take the penalties prior to the sprint and obviously use that gearbox and everything in the sprint. Yeah, but you but cannot the applies to the GP. Yeah, the penalty always goes to the GP. Otherwise, everyone would just do them in for sprints, wouldn't they? Yeah, yeah, because less points on offer, so less to lose. Um, Bingo. Yes. Well, that takes on to Max is going to take a grid penalty at some point between now and the end of the season, and it definitely won't be at Abu Dhabi. And I would hazard a guess it won't be at Vegas. Um, so it'll either be here or Qatar. And to be honest, it looks like it's going to be in Brazil. Well, yeah, um, Helmut Marco, I think, literally yesterday has confirmed that he will be taking a grid penalty, or all but confirmed that he will be taking a grid penalty here. It's a five-place penalty five for a penalty. gearbox, if I'm not mistaken. I thought it was an ICE. Um, Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, uh, perhaps you've read different articles then. Well, um, I, I was adamant it was rubbish. a grid box. Uh, sorry, a gearbox even. Um but I mean, Jamie. The, I mean, the first thing there to talk about, of course, is obviously you you say about Hamilton's illegal engine in 2021. Surely now we're going to find out whether it was, or obviously whether it's just skill. With you know, if Verstappen can't come from wherever he starts to take the win, <laughs> then Lewis is just better. Well, they haven't been putting a Juju engine in but Perez's car all year, giving him ten thousand penalties. Love, have they? I genuinely love to know what the performance, what the power advantage was from that. Like, just out of pure engineering interest, I would yeah. be so... In like, whether it is genuinely, like, 20 horsepower, or whether they found, like, 60 or 70 or something wild. Because that... Imagine that in the 2020 Mercedes, how fast oh, yeah. that thing would have been. Well, yeah. The the fact that um, he was just able to rinse past the entire field. Everything. In, 
in a in a ground effect, not ground effect, in a the other one, <laughs> a non ground effect era where the dirt yeah was crazy. And he yeah, I mean the sprint race did help because if he starts last in the GP, Max almost certainly wins that race. I mean um, he made up places pretty quickly. He started fifteenth. He started tenth, not fifteenth. No, he had a, he got to tenth in the sprint and then had another five no, post grid he drop. Got to he fifth started fifteenth. He got to fifth in the sprint. Did he? Yes, and then he. Oh, I uh, remember it. I thought he started fifteenth in the race, fifteenth no. to win. No, it wasn't. It was tenth. Fair enough. Still uh, impressive. You call yourself though. a fan? What is this? I do. I do call myself a fan. Uh, yes. I but can't wait. Max's <laughs> engine will not be illegal. I like to think. I mean, uh, nor, neither was Lewis's. <laughs> it was yeah. OP and would it probably would have blown up three laps after the end of Abu Dhabi, but it was not illegal. <laughs> that's the important bit. Yes. Uh, yeah, he did go 20th to 5th in the sprint and then started 10th on the grid. Ah, fair enough. I, I only saw, literally, I think it was a couple of days ago, the clip of George Russell at the start of the sprint in Brazil that year. I don't mean, we've gone down a rabbit hole immediately. Didn't he just have you ever take s- someone out immediately? <laughs> No, he didn't take anyone out. He literally just moves over and breaks oh, 100 oh, metres yeah. early for turn one for Lewis. To let and obviously people through. are going... People are obviously just going, oh, well, you know, it's, it's, he's not on the same team. He should be supporting him. George has literally already signed to Merck next year. Yeah. You better believe he's helping Lewis out at any possible yeah, exactly. cost. Exactly. Oh, uh, oh, that man. worked out. But we should get out of this rabbit hole and talk about this week's sprint race because it's the fifth one of the season. Yep. As you said, Max has won all of them so far, which is good going. Yep. 40 uh, extra points. How many points has Lando no, scored in sprints eight, this year? eight points for a sprint. Sorry, 32, isn't it? I, I'm doing five, yeah. 32 extra points. How many points has Lando scored in sprints this year, Jamie? Has, so sprint racing killed, has sprint racing killed the championship fight this year? That's what I I'm wondering. Know what? I mean, it's a simplification of the model because the Austria... Like, the sprint races have a direct impact on the GP, I would say. Yes, but if you remove them entirely. So, Lando has had... What was, this, what was the fourth... So, he got a sixth in China, which is three points. Three points, yeah. He got a third in Austria, which is six points. Yeah, That's so nine. nine. Where was the next one? Miami, you forgot, and... Miami, he was out. Okay, and... And uh, USA, culture. he got six. So Lando has so only got 15, 15 points. So that would slash the gap by 17 points, which that would be, be 30. On. That's almost a race um, win. Well, and then how many points has Leclerc scored? Let's see if this gets oh, even closer. He's really testing me now. All right. So Max would be on 330. Lando would be on 300. Charles Leclerc would be on... He would be on... Where is this season? Okay, he got a fourth. So that's... Five. five. Five points plus so seven points. down to points. 286. So 279. Plus two points. 277. Plus five points. 272. So, I mean, actually, Charles would end up pretty much the same gap back as he is already. Uh, he'd be slightly closer to Max, but further away from Lando. Yeah. Um, well, there so we go. We, we can confirm. Sprint races have ruined F1 2024. And what uh, which the fastest laps ruined them as well? I uh, maybe <laughs> how many hypotheticals are we gonna do <laughs> to try and work out a way this title fight would be more interesting? Exactly, DHLs actually they've got basically the same. Norris has got more, I think. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Max has only got two. Norris got about really five. in the most dominant car all year on average qualifying mm. pace still. <laughs> I'm not rising it, to that one. It is uh, genuinely no. So far this year, it is genuinely still the fastest car on qualifying aggregate. Well, is it the fastest car? Or is it the fastest driver? No, it's the fastest car. Because if you take Verstappen out of the picture, it's probably the fifth fastest car. No, if you take Verstappen out of the picture, Red Bull learn how to set it up properly for <laughs> any other driver. Um, I mean, you're, you're talking about Sergio Perez here, Jamie, a man that you've never rated. I've never imagine rated. How far, but... Imagine how far off Hulkenberg would be if he was <laughs> Red Bull. He'd be miles <laughs> off the pace. There was a point where Perez was good, though. Like, 2020 yeah. and 2021. Like, where has that Perez gone? Um, yeah. And that takes us on nicely to our next piece it does. of news. It does. Uh, Talk because, us through, Jamie. Uh, the, the rumour mill is, is kicking out, as as usual at this point, that uh, Sergio Perez is about to do his last race in Formula 1, for now, probably forever, um, <laughs> because Red Bull have basically just run out of patience, because Mexico was shambolic. Yeah. Um, 
And, I mean, Kota wasn't much better. And, yeah, he had that one renaissance race in Baku. And even that ended up in the barriers. <laughs> yeah, same, so, which ended up with less yeah, points than they anyone yeah. else. Um, so the, the, the talk is that they're very impressed by Liam Lawson. And uh, Lawson could be driving the Red Bull by Qatar, which, you know... When they put Albert in the red bar after ten races, that wasn't too early, was it? And then they just kept put Lawson in after two. <laughs> uh, to be fair, he did six last year, he did. and he did race at Qatar last year. Yeah, for one corner. Um, was that in, no? That was in the sprint, wasn't it? Uh, was I thought that was the GP? Maybe because it was Lewis that crashed out at the start of the GP. They, I don't think they put the safety car out straight away, and then Lawson still managed to bin it as well. Yeah, uh, fair. You might be right. Apparently, I don't remember anything anymore. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good oh, skill finished, for a podcast. He's finished seventeenth, actually. Yeah, so, yeah, there you go. Yeah, it must see. have been a sprint. He was out in two corners. I think it was Ocon's fault, if I remember rightly. It was Ocon and Perez and him, but I, I didn't even think that was lap one. I thought I was like halfway through the sprint. No, that was Hulkenberg that put Ocon and Perez. Uh, okay. I remember that very well because okay. Hulk was about to get his yes. third points of the season. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, yeah, but we're not here to talk about Qatar. Although we are, if Perez is going for Qatar. Um, yeah. What do you think, Liam Lawson, to Red Bull for the next race? Uh, honestly, I think you're kind of at the point now with Red Bull of just keep checking with the car to the end of the year. Give yourselves a little bit of stability. Maybe if you get to Abu Dhabi and say Verstappen's already got the title wrapped up, or you know, you got a couple of things secured, then you just give him Lawson the run for the weekend. But you're kind of there going, it staggers me with a team like Red Bull. Um, the A, first of all, that you think after how many drivers have struggled in that car alongside Verstappen that you haven't really seemingly changed much still. And I know mm. obviously that a lot of the drivers there go, you know, Mac, you know, and I'm not going to try and sit here and argue against it, that Max isn't obviously incredibly talented and quick anyway. Obviously, as soon as he goes wheel to wheel with anyone, he's got the skills of a teapot. Well, um, some but... would argue it's on purpose. It's quite skilled to. Uh, I would argue it's stupid. Um, but it is stupid, but it's deliberate. <laughs> but it's you're kind of there going. You've got to change something with the way this organization works. And he, yeah. Let's let's be fair. If they put Lawson in for the final three races and he absolutely drowns. Are they going to leave him in the car next year? It might give you more problems yeah. going into the winter, and then you don't really know what to do for next year because you already know Lawson can't do it. Checo's gone. Do you put Sonoda in and end up in the same scenario at the start of next year? You something fundamentally has to change with that team if you want to win constructors' titles. Yeah, but it's just not going to happen. They haven't won a constructors' title since last year since last gonna, year I was going to say, <laughs> I was gonna say since the very last one um, <laughs> but yeah I mean Max would have won 2023 on his own would he have won 22 on he his would own have. as well no no near. not quite uh, but yeah I think when the field is close Perez like he is the reason that they're third in the championship Verstappen has a 47 point lead on Norris so all Perez has to be doing is not to be losing to Piastri by 47 points and he's nowhere and he near is. Yeah. I was going to say, how many points per game is he? Sorry, oh, ninety. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's is sorry, practically... no, sorry, one hundred and one even. That's mental. Um. So yeah, it it is totally down to Perez. Why Red Bull are third in the constructors, and they're quite lucky Mercedes fell off. Although I said be fourth. So, <laughs> um, yes, I think it's time to go to quote Arsenal fan TV. Uh, but I I genuinely don't I don't know if Lawson will do any better. I like Lawson. I do. And I think he's got a bit about him. But sticking him into that Red Bull with three races to go in a championship fight for his teammate just seems a bit unfair. And I'm sure he'll take it with both hands. But yeah, I just don't could, know how well he'll do. Could you theoretically, and I'm sure obviously sponsors and things like that would hate this, and he, he just wouldn't work logistically, but could you theoretically put him in that car for like FP1 at Vegas, swap them over literally for Vegas free practice one, <laughs> and then obviously swap them back if you're not happy? I wouldn't do it at Vegas because practice sessions there are a joke, but I would do it at Qatar. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah, but you only get one practice session in Qatar was my point. Oh, yeah. That's what, that was what I was thinking. Vegas is like the only sensible one you can do apart from Abu Dhabi. Yeah, you're not going to do it at Abu Dhabi, are you? <laughs> no. Um, no. Yeah, I I had a thought, which I got laughed at for. It's always a dangerous thought. Oh, yeah, here we go. This is Jamie's grand idea for the week. That uh, there is a driver on the grid who has been known to literally give up his own race f 
for his pretty average but better teammate. Uh, I in, like the way you're describing him as average. That's good. Well, That's a good you know, start. if if Magnuson, I'm talking about Kevin Magnuson. If Magnuson will destroy <laughs> his credibility for Hulkenberg, who I obviously massive Hulkenberg fan, but he's not a world champion. He's not a podium sitter in his career so far. <laughs> I was going to say the fact that Magnuson will just throw everything at the competitors to get Hulkenberg one point in Saudi Arabia <laughs> and Miami, <laughs> like. He clearly, ha- like, his, his quality pace is not all that. But in the race, he is robust. Hang on a minute, he's had a pole here in Brazil. He has. has to still be the only team with where both drivers have taken pole at Brazil. That's I true. love it. <laughs> yes, they're the only team on the grid. <laughs> a wow. fully Brazilian pole set a lineup. <laughs> That's mad. Yeah, fair play. Uh, obviously, whenever F1 tweets that Hulkenberg got pole position, it will be getting retweeted by myself, as it does every year. Of course it will. Um, Follow Jamie on Twitter, at Jamie underscore 183. There's your annual tweet. (laughs) Um, I think Red Bull could do worse than than signing Kevin Magnussen for the last three races, because he can't be that expensive to get out of Haas, because he's off anyway. Stick Bearman in Well, I was going to say, you say obviously about uh, Magnussen's kind of loyalty to Haas. That seemingly has stopped. (laughs) Now they obviously know he knows he's not there next year. He's kind of gone, no, I don't care anymore. Yeah, um, exactly. So I, w- would he therefore do the same thing at Red Bull? Well, I think they'd be like, look, here's a million pounds for your last <laughs> three races. Here's a million pounds. <laughs> do what we say. Take out everyone apart from Verstappen. There you go. Fair enough. <laughs> and you think Red Bull can just if throw he, a million quid? If he well? had the pace to hang with the top six, it would be a great strategy, I think. He uh, would absolutely crash. Well, if he takes Norris with him, perfect. You're not honestly trying to suggest that Red Bull try and fix this season, are No, you? but make it look like an accident. Uh, right, how do you... How do you <laughs> Jamie, have you ever seen Spingate in NASCAR? Because this is basically what you're trying to describe. I'm it not saying Magnussen would then. take them out, but driving like he did in Saudi Arabia or in Miami Sprint would be perfect. Uh... Like, all I'm going to say, Jamie, is I appreciate, because all this is saying to me right now is you're getting very nervous that Max isn't going to win this title, and I well, like that. Checo Perez is useless. I don't see Lawson being that much. Like, I don't see Lawson taking points off Norris, is what I'm trying to say. Do you I, see anyone taking points off Norris, though? Unless well, they hire Charles Leclerc for the last three races another, or something dumb. If they clone Verstappen, <laughs> then yeah, but... <laughs> Like, saying, to be honest, no. You're the reach, this episode is incredible. <laughs> I'm loving this. You you completely lost your mind. I mean, another driver that they probably should have signed is Carlos Sainz, uh, by the way. They should have done that a long time ago, but there we are. Um, He's not. Unless he's got escape clauses in his Williams contract, he's definitely going to Which Williams. he does. Yeah. He does, but not for 24. Of 25, oh, yeah, not, not for next year, sorry. Um, So, yeah. I don't know what Red Bull should do, but I'm not sure Liam Lawson's the answer. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, that just takes on to the quiz. It, okay, it, does it? Okay. Yes, because your quiz concerns uh, Red Bull Racing. But okay. not as you might expect, because it concerns oh, no. Red Bull Racing in their previous guys. Oh. Which, it, which is? Jaguar. Exactly. Jaguar were a Formula 1 team back in the early 2000s. They were terrible. They were pretty awful. Uh, in their time, they had eight Formula One drivers. You have to name all of them. Go. How, how much time have I got? You've how got much a minute. time have I got? Oh no, restart them. Restart okay. the clock. Restart. You've right. got to tell me these things before we start. Your time starts now. Eddie Irvine, Johnny Correct. Herbert, Mark yes. Webber, Giorgio Pantano. Not Pantano. No, not rest, Pantano. Yeah. Pizzonia. Yes. Sorry. Um, they had Christian Kleon. Yes. They had... Three more. Um, didn't have Barrichello at any nope. point. No, you'd already gone to Ferrari. He was at Stewart before yeah, this. Yeah, before that. Um, Heifeld? No. No? Oh, no, not truly. you got 25 seconds. I think you'll have heard of all of them. you definitely got yeah, heard of them. Yeah, I'm, th- I'm forgetting one that came in. Oh, Justin Wilson. Yes. Yep. Um, 15 seconds. I know it's two that only did one seasons each, isn't it? And your time is up. 
Uh, they definitely did. The, uh, you, you got almost all of them. Six out of eight. Not but, am I right in saying that Jaguar had never had the same driver lineup two years in a row? Like they always uh, changed at least one driver every yeah, single it looks like year. It. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying yeah. to think because they had. Was it Pitsonia that they had for like one race in 2003 no. and then he was full time in 2004? No. Or is that someone else? You're thinking there's a driver who did one race in 2000 and then started 2001 and lost his seat after four races. Is it Denise? Similar, but no. Oh, not Rossi or anything like that, is no. it? No. <laughs> no. Luciano Berti. Yes, of course. And then the guy who replaced Berti in 2001 and then kept the seat for the rest of the season and to 02. Who was that alongside Irvine? Yeah, next to Irvine. Yeah, I know it was next to Irvine. Who was it, though? He's a very well-known test driver. Oh, was it Vert? No. No? De La Rosa? De La Rosa. Yeah, it was De La Rosa. Of course it was De La Rosa. How do I forget De La Rosa? You know what's worse about that, Jamie? Yes. Was As soon as you said about Jaguar, I literally watched Mobile Chicane's video on them yesterday. Great. <laughs> Their entire <laughs> history of Formula 1. Wow. And you still <laughs> only got 6 out of 8. What I still this? only got 6 out of 8. Oh, that was that was not my finest. I don't know why I suddenly forgot De La Rosa. For some reason, that in my head that he was already at McLaren by then as a reserve. Fair. I'll take that, though. Three quarters, I'll take still. It's a very odd quiz. It is an odd quiz, we but we're scraping the barrel this part of the season. Uh, Hang on a you could have done Brazilian drivers or something like I that. Could have Actually, done, there's so many terrible ones in yeah, the 90s name, and 2000s. I mean, you forgot Luciano Berti when they're only eight options. Exactly, which was both quizzes <laughs> in, the, in the mud immediately. <laughs> yes. Shall we Hamilton? talk more about Lewis Hamilton? Because He's driving Senna's car. That's I cool. S- I swear that Senna car is getting beaten like a dead horse this season. What, the MP5? Because I was at Imola when Seb drove it. That uh, was the MP8, wasn't it? Oh, it was red and white in 1991. It was every Senna McLaren livery <laughs> ever. <laughs> I, I thought mean, it was... Pretty certain... I thought Senna drove the 1993 car. Senna didn't drive it. Uh, sorry, not Senna. Um, <laughs> he did, but not recently. <laughs> <laughs> Seb, I swear, as an MP8B, I thought. MP4-8B, even. I thought we had the 1993 car. Uh, yes, you're right. Yeah, Cause, So that is the 1993. Yeah. Lewis is driving the 1989 car, which okay. was the take-out of Prost at Turn no. 1 at Suzuka. Because no, I don't... No, it was. It was. It? Yeah, I was going to say. No, no. Because... I swear a 90 was that. 89 was when they crashed into each other. I thought 88 was when they crashed. No, 88, sorry, was when he won it in the MP4-4. Mm-hmm. 89, sorry, yeah, was the MP5. And then 1990, yeah, sorry, for the MP6. I yeah, think, I I think those old cars are so cool. Like, for they, me, they, they are. They, they all blend into one for me. Uh, they don't, though, do they? They're all <laughs> special for different reasons. But if you tell me, like, if, I, if you put in front of me a 93 McLaren and a 91 McLaren... I would not be able to tell with you which is which. <laughs> oh no, they look completely different. The 1993 car is so narrow in comparison. Mm. This is when they'd already had to go down to V8. Mm. I don't know. My my interest in perhaps, history perhaps you're just not 2000. a good McLaren. Yeah, you just have no understanding of proper peak F1 machinery and the almost perfect season. True, but it is a fun is a fun quiz for you, Jamie. Okay. okay. It's not a serious one. Speaking of all conquering, can you name me the only um, engine manufacturer that has had a perfect F1 season of wins? Was it not Ford? It was Ford. Twice. I remember it. Yeah, because there was a season where they fouled everyone but Ferrari. Exactly. Yeah. Wild, isn't it? Crazy. Uh, and I believe, yeah, no, that's obviously the MP4-8 that obviously Seb drove as a Ford engine. The MP4-5 doesn't. Yes. I, I genuinely love to know what Senna's views of F1 would be today. It's a very oddly, no, I wouldn't quite call it yeah, philosophical, but odd path to go down. Way. I would genuinely love to know what he thinks of Formula One nowadays. I think he'd still respect it quite a lot. I feel like I think he'd love to have a go in one of the yeah yeah uh, and the thing one is, of the high downforce cars of the last is, gen. The Sauber is definitely faster than these McLarens in the nineties, isn't it? Like, sorry. How fast were the were the cars in the nineties? They're probably about ten seconds a lap faster. Yeah. yeah. So what you're saying is Joe Gonyu's better than Senna. 
No, no, I'm not. <laughs> In what world is that what you read from? He can, that he can drive faster around Brazil. Hey, eh? <laughs> you are uh, genuinely. What's happened to you since we recorded on Monday? You've lost your mind. Yeah, I'm, some of the I'm things you've come it. out Mr. with today. Stefan's going to lose the title, and I'm fuming. I look forward to it. I look forward to it. Right, we've, we've rambled a lot today, Jamie. We Should we get on with our predictions? We've, we've uh, got, that's the last yes. thing on our list. Yes. You said on Monday you might consider letting me go first. Is that <laughs> going to be the case? There's ten points up for grabs today, remember? What are the scores on the doors? No, I'm going to go first. Um, okay. The scores are... <coughs> you're on 71, I'm on 66. So yes. I, need, I need to close in some ground. You do. You need to take a, well, a point and a quarter out of me each week. See now the end of the year. Mm, that's You've not got to draw this. No, it's not. To be fair, I will say. So you, it's sprint, win, pole, and top three, isn't it? We do so ten yes. points available. What is the weather saying in Talagos? I wonder. It's apparently the circuit's been resurfaced, so there's no grip if it rains. There's a smattering of rain around on Sunday. That might be fun. Prime Verstappen well, bottle times. We'll go and see that. It's Versa- definitely Verstappen. Definitely not Leclerc. Do you remember 2016 when Verstappen? Oh, be- I hate that narrative <laughs> because Verstappen, because he kept making mistakes, was always on fresh tires against That's everybody a else. That it drive, was. you have to respect that drive an awful lot. I think it's overrated. Wow. <laughs> Hang on a minute, you just tried to claim Joe Guan Yu was quicker than Senna. That was obviously bait. This is not bait at all. Verstappen in 2016, Brazil, was his breakout drive more than Spain in my mind uh, I just love I... the way he kept mugging off Rosberg that year but couldn't get close to Lewis well who won the championship <laughs> the wrong man <laughs> I will say pole position will go to sprint pole sorry yeah oh, oh sprint win first okay sprint win sorry yeah yeah sprint win will be Lando Norris I'm going okay. for points over over what I actually want <laughs> pole position will be Charles Leclerc. Okay. Grand Prix win. I might go Leclerc again, you know. But is it going to be a back-to-back three in a row for Ferrari? Let's go Leclerc race win. When was Norris. the last time Ferrari won three races back-to-back? Oof. 2018? 2017? Probably earlier, I'd imagine. Well, earlier, you're then talking, what, 2004? 08. Oh, 08, yeah. I reckon it was probably 08, to be honest, because 17 and 18, it was only Seb winning, and he never won three in a row. Did he not? No, he got two in a row quite a few times, but he never won, I don't think he won three back-to-back. Mm, and then, fair enough. obviously, Alonso and Massa never shared wins out. <laughs> Alonso never got no. more than two in a row. I don't, did Alonso ever win two in a row? Yeah. He did. He won Italy Singapore in 2010. But uh, <laughs> I love just your random yeah, <laughs> just pluck you out. Of... <laughs> so you're probably talking 08. I think they won the first, three of the first four races in 08, probably. Massa, Bahrain, yeah, Raikkonen, Australia, and no, he didn't win Australia, did he? But he won no. Malaysia and something else. Spain would have been probably. Four. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going for it again. Leclerc to win the race. Norris to for come the first second. time in 16 years. Ferrari going to win three in a row. Norris to come second with Piastri third. Oh! Where's Max so, coming? Well, he got a grip penalty, doesn't he? And he's in the fourth fastest car, so he'll probably come fourth or fifth. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, that's it. Interesting. So, I'm going to say... Oh, sprint pole tonight. It's not sprint pole. Who cares about that? Sorry, sprint win <laughs> tomorrow. Oh, sprint win, yeah. Who do you say, Lando? I said Norris to win the sprint. I'll say Leclerc then. I'll say Lando for the win. Charles in Wait, P2. he's getting pole. You've forgotten pole position. Oh, sorry, pole position. Um, I'm going to say Lando. So I'm just seeing the opposite of you Leclerc so far. P2. So Leclerc sprint win. Lando pole. Lando win. Leclerc P2. I, I want to say Lewis, but it's obviously not going to happen. Although, to be fair, they are doing special Senna hats this weekend, so we'll try harder. So he'll be, he'll be powered by the Brazilian fans as an honorary Brazilian. Exactly. Uh, you know what? Yeah, let's go for it. I've got Brilliant. points to spare. Lewis Hamilton, P3 <laughs> at the Grand Prix. I suppose you said that in Silverstone. They went and won the thing. So Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, no, no Sergio Perez on the podium. No, oh, sadly not. I don't know, this weekend, <laughs> I'm afraid. 
yeah. when are Discord going to get rid of these annoying noises as well? The like, annoying I'm, people on the other end of my call. No. <laughs> <laughs> I actually meant like the Halloween theme stuff. It's annoying uh, me to no end. I have no idea. Probably, well, it's the 1st of November now, isn't it? So, you know, that, that dates this video. Get it gone. Get it gone. <laughs> Jamie, have we got anything else to add? This has been uh, arguably our worst ever show. Lawson apologised for flagging Perez on the main street in Mexico. Yeah, so, I don't think he should have apologised. He deserved it. And he also said he's not allowed to make friends, which is always a good good start, isn't it? Exactly. Uh, he's the new Juan Pablo Montoya. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do rate him. I think he's good. But, as I said, I don't know if he'll tear up Red Bull. No. No. Is that about right? Thank you all, as always, so much for listening. If you have enjoyed, I don't know how on this week's show, <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, please make sure you get yourself subscribed. We want to try and hit 1k... Uh, by the end of the year. Jamie and I, I mean, we've got a couple of weeks off of this, after this, haven't we, Jamie? Uh, but we will be back early next week uh, to review the Brazilian Grand Prix. Kevin Magnussen takes the victory. <laughs> Absolute scenes. 